The first thing that I do with every Wrangler is say that I'm not gonna modify it. That lasts for about two hours until I'm online and looking on the forums and then the mods start coming. Let's get into it and we're gonna run through what I do with my brand new one week old Jeep Wrangler JL. Now we're gonna start this right away with my number one must have. You gotta get one of these if you have a brand new vehicle. That is going to be the cell phone mount. Now I have mine mounted up onto the top dash pillar with a brand that I'm kind of new to. I started buying these about a year ago, Bullet Point Mounting Solutions. And I've been extremely happy with both the quality as well as just the customer service with these. I mean, I buy them, they give you a tracking notification, even show you a map until it's delivered. They're extremely solid and well-built, carbon fiber center section, and overall just a good looking mount. Now this mounts right to the top dash pad here. They also make an entire kind of tray that mounts all different separate positions, GoPros, all sorts of things. Or you can even mount them all other areas of the vehicle. For a long time, I used to run the Carolina Meadow Masters on this side grab handle here. But overall, when I looked at the phone mount, it's something I needed to have day one. I constantly have my phone plugged in with CarPlay running. And this spot right here just gives it a better spot for me to grab it off, check something real quick at a glance while you're driving, or even at a stoplight, you can just check and see what text message came through. But I will say that hands down, number one, get the phone mount mounted up to there. I know this is a common one and it seems pretty simple. I'll leave a link in the description for Bullet Point. These guys have been absolutely great to me and these aren't sponsored at all. So I mean, I, I buy these with my own cash, install them on this vehicle. So I love these and I'd recommend them to you too. Now we're going to get into number two, but I will say make sure you follow till the end because these aren't just all mods. There's going to be some things that I check and do when I first buy my Wrangler and it's something you definitely want to check out when you get yours. Now the next thing we're going to install, this is my number two kind of first five things I do to my Jeep. You can see a Mopar part number on there. These are going to be the factory Mopar floor liners. So I picked these up at the dealership here. Onyx do a little quick inspection on those. We've got a front and rear set of the Jeep floor mats. Now I absolutely love these. I gotta say, I've been a huge fan of these even over the weather techs or the aftermarket. Simply the biggest thing is that you can actually tap these into your factory drain system. The carpet has a little cutout and a notch where you can pull it out and then pull the plug on top of this and it pops all the way through your tub and it will drain out. So if you get salt in here like the winter, like I normally do, it'll drain right through here and go out of the vehicle. So it's really nice. They have the nubs on the back to grip and then it's all Mopar parts. So you get a nice factory warranty with these and they're just built to last. These go through a lot harder restrictions. This is a must have. And I'll say a lot of uh, a lot of other channels I watch like to destroy, you know, the factory parts they pull out. So these Jeep floor mats, I am gonna be giving away. So if you're a commenter or subscriber on here, just subscribe to the channel if you need a set. You know what I mean? If you don't want to do the rubber floor mats, let me know, I'll have a set of four of these. They have a week worth of use on them, but I'll mail them to you. So drop a comment below. We don't like to destroy all these factory parts because there's a lot of folks that can use them. And plus, if I store them in the garage and keep any more Jeep parts, my wife might kill me. So you're helping me out two ways. Let's set these aside and we can throw the brand new ones in. So now we're gonna drop our driver's side in. They pop into there, but the nice thing with these is that they do have that lip. So it's gonna go up on that center and also go up on the outside edge. And then you can use your factory plug and put that outside here now. When you're ready to rinse this out, you can simply pull that plug, rinse it, and it'll drain right through. A Definitely a great hack with the Mopar floor mats, and they're a great price too, so a really nice feature. This is a must have. Now my number three first five that I did to my Jeep was swap out the antenna. I gotta tell you, I absolutely hate the stock antennas on the Wrangler, which I think most of you, as well as Amazon, can attest because there are a ton of different options out there. Now for mine, I went with something a little more unique and I wanted to see if it would fit. It's an OEM Ford Bronco antenna. I think it looks great, it's a little bit shorter, and it is black in color which matches the rest of the vehicle if you guys want to find out more on how i did that check out the entire bronco antenna swap it was really fun and there's a couple little tricks and quirks to put this on here it is completely diy and really easy to do at home plus it's extremely affordable now my number four isn't necessarily one specific part or one thing that i do to the jeep but it's kind of a collective of all of it now i've off-roaded i've wheeled and i've been in some bad situations driving one of the most capable built off-road vehicles ever but you need to have a couple other things to make them even more capable if you're in a bad situation or if you're trying to get someone out of one. So I always throw recovery gear into the back of my Jeep. Now a basic simple recovery kit is all that you need. You know, you have one of these vehicles and you can just add a couple things into here to make sure you get out of a bad situation. And mine, I do keep a recovery bag, my bubba rope in the back, a first aid kit, as well as my CB and handheld radios there. Now I would say if you're gonna get anything specific out of this number four that are my must have for the recovery kit, would be right here. I do have my hitch mounted D-rings. Now I have two different styles. And what I wanted to mention about this is that you don't have to break the bank to do this. This one here is a completely steel. It's a very heavy piece, but as you can see, it's nodular and it is starting to rust a little, but it does the job perfectly. And then next to it, I do have a billet completely made by Factor 55. And this one has a max load of 9,500 pounds made in the US. 
two rear mounts as well as the D-ring point. It's a lot lighter, it looks better, it's kind of blingy, but it is about four times the cost. I have a standard shackle here too. A D-ring shackle will get you out of a lot of situations and it mounts right into here and will help you recover or pull someone else out from the rear of the vehicle. Either of these, a D-ring coupled with a recovery rope can get 95% of the situations out that you're gonna encounter day-to-day -day driving or in the snow or maybe out in a little bit of mud or even if you're on the beach. And my number five and something that you should do not only if you buy a brand new Jeep, but buy a used Jeep or buy any vehicles, give it a full once over. Now on these JLs, there are some checklists, there's some spreadsheets on things that you should check out because sometimes the factory makes small errors. I can tell you that no factory assembly line is perfect and it is common for things to come out with a little bit of a hiccup or a little bit of an error. Let's pop the hood and I'll show you one that has been kind of the big one on the forums and one of the big ones that everyone seems to tell you and that is the fuse panel. Now, like I said, every factory isn't perfect and when they assemble these vehicles, sometimes things don't happen exactly the way that they should. These fuses, when a factory machine or some sort of giant robot goes and pushes them all in there, all these fuses at once, is that they aren't getting completely depressed. Now what we're gonna do in this one is I just wanna check and see if mine are, because I have read if they aren't, certain issues can happen. So we'll just try and push on a few of them. From what I'm just feeling so far, nothing has been really too dramatic as far as pushing them in further. Maybe a little bit. I mean, now I'm talking like a millimeter or so, nothing that's ever gonna cause an issue. But I've heard rumors of some of these like sticking like halfway out and really causing some serious issues. But it seems like there's a little bit to go on some of them. Most of them seem completely pushed in. Like that one, that had just a little bit to go. It's not a bad little process though, I gotta be honest. Most of the guys on the forums just whine about this stuff, but I would probably check out. So definitely check this out when you get your vehicle. See like that one, that one just went in just a little bit further, so did that one. Okay. Now these are the first five things I like to check out, I like to do to my vehicle to ensure that I'm getting the best ride possible, as well as just making it comfortable on the inside for when I'm commuting back and forth to work or just going for a nice drive with me and the family. Now I hope you like this one. There is a ton more content like this coming. A lot of cool mods, a lot of cool hacks that we're doing to these vehicles. I'm really just showing you how to live the lifestyle with them. So if you like this one, definitely give us a thumbs up. Like I said before, if you guys want those floor mats, you know anybody that could use them, drop a comment too on that. I'll pick somebody and I'll just ship them to you. So I'd rather see them go to a good home than see them sit on my shelf like a lot of other things do for years to come. Until next time, I am Matt from Dirt Road Cred. Get out there and earn yours.